I applaud you for your faithfulness, your commitment, and your love for Joy and I, and just supporting and encouraging and standing with us as we fulfill God's great commission in winning souls and making disciples. Can I boil your lips? Kiss that person beside you. Say, this is from the bishop. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I ain't doing it. I'm stop it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Your lips are so sweet and so pleasant. You know, uh, this morning we're privileged to have a gift. I know personally, I've known her for a number of years. We've been friends for a number of years. goes back into the 80s uh, when my father, Bishop Hash, was living. Uh, we've been knowing one another. He became a friend of the family. Mother Hash, Bishop, adopted him. And personally, he said, Mother Hash is his black mom. <laughs> we were there at one of his conferences when his natural mother died. And he was such an example to me yesterday when I had the opportunity to preach my mom's homegoing service. And as I was sitting there thinking and, you know, you only have one father. Paul said you have many structures, but few fathers. I had a natural father, I believe, that was second to none in Bishop Dr. R.K. Hash. And you heard me say yesterday, we had good godly parents. And I can say this on behalf of all of my brothers, all of my siblings. We all had a special relationship with our mother and our father because they were such good examples to us of the love of God, of the ways of God. They set such a great example. They left a legacy for us to follow. And I was so honored yesterday to be able to speak on behalf of my brothers and sisters, on behalf of my mother. Later on in life, Kenneth Hagin came into my life my dad passed, and I chose Kenneth Hagin to be a spiritual father to me because I believe everyone needs that person that can speak into their lives. And then I had, through the grace of God, I had a personal relationship with Dad Hagin. He passed, and then I was talking to my wife's Joyce, and I was looking around. I knew a number of people, but... I chose by the Spirit, Kenneth Copeland, to be my spiritual father. I prayed about it. The Lord led me to Ken. I told Ken, I want you to be my spiritual father. He said, okay, JC, as he always does. You look in your face with them blue eyes like you came from heaven. <laughs> but I'm honored today to present. He called me and said, JC, I want to come to your church. I can't be here Saturday, but I want to come to your church Sunday. I said, you don't have to pray no longer, speak no longer. We are here. <laughs> so I want you all to stand up and receive my spiritual father, my friend, <laughs> Kenneth Kirk. Love you, Ken. You got it. Bless you. Come on! Shout amen, somebody! Hallelujah! Woo! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Father, we, we, we praise and uplift the name of Jesus. It is so good to be back in this place. And I thank you for the honor and the privilege, my Heavenly Father, for being a part of this family. It's blessed me and continues to bless me. And Father, we come before your word this morning with expectant hearts. We open our hearts and minds for revelation from heaven, words that move heaven on the earth. And we give you praise and honor and thanksgiving, sir. 
And I pray the blessing of the Lord on this congregation and upon all that are in the sound of my voice. And I give you praise and thanksgiving that faith will come. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And faith will come to all that will allow your word to have access into their spirits. And we praise you and we bless you and we thank you that great and wonderful and mighty things are in store. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, there have been those that just flip from one place and then flip over to another place. But the time has come to set the roots. Set the roots. Set the roots of your life deep into the love of God. Becoming rooted and grounded in my love, saith the Lord. For in there lies safety. In there lies great and marvelous prosperity beyond all of your wildest dreams. For my love, you have to understand to be and grounded and engulfed in my love is to be grounded and engulfed by me. This church and this congregation is a marked spot. This is a marked place. It has been marked and it has been, it has been said in heaven and it has been sent into the earth that this is the place. This is the place where the fire began. This is the place where it continues to roar. This is the place where it continues to grow. And it's going out from here. And it'll continue to grow out from here. And one year from today, you'll not even know this place. One year from today, it'll be hard to get in here. One year from today, it'll be hard because there'll be so many. There'll be so many. There'll be so many. There'll be so many. Because of the signs and the wonders and the miracles being done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And it'll be worship time and it'll be thrilling time. No, not one day a week. No, not three days a week, but seven days a week. Glory to God. It's coming. It's coming. And if you will get rooted and grounded in my love, you will be so dead. You will. People will not be able to refuse you because of the love of the Almighty God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise God. Oh, I'll tell you what. I missed it yesterday. Oh, I wanted to be here at Mama's own going yesterday. And I was preaching in Dayton, Ohio, and, and uh, it just, but, I, you know, I'm a day late, but I'm here. <laughs> I, uh, there, there's a couple of things. I, I thought J.C.'s going to just steal my thunder there a while ago. But he, let, he you know, he didn't. Praise God. I, uh, uh, Bishop invited me to come preach. And we had a really, really good meeting. Where did we have that meeting, J.C.? Was that, it, it was downtown, wasn't it? Yeah, downtown. yeah it's a convention center. Convention yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> ooh, mama wear them good-looking hats. <laughs> All right. I don't know, don't tell nobody I told you this. White women don't know nothing about that. <laughs> And most white folks don't know how to have church. <laughs> now don't y'all disappoint me this morning. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, mama say, Ken, <laughs> let me talk to Gloria. <laughs> I can just hear her in my, uh, her voice. Anyway. <laughs> 
Well, one night I announced in, in the, the meeting we were having downtown. I said, now, tomorrow, my subject is going to be everything that the New Testament has to say about interracial marriage. Mama's eyes went like that. She told me later, she said, I know the clan going to be busting in every door here. <laughs> so that, that next night, <laughs> I, I got up there, you know. She, And so the next night, I said, now, I told you last night and tonight, I am going to tell you everything that the New Testament has to say about interracial marriage. It was just about as quiet as it is right now. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's what the New Testament has to say about interracial marriage. Amen. 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 Now y'all gonna help me or not? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. So and JC mentioned this too. We in in the Southwest Believers Convention, which is our largest convention every year. And so mom and dad were there. And I asked them to stand up and they stood up. And of course, man, you know, everybody just went wild when they stood up. I said, Joe, come up on the platform. Come on up here on the platform. So they came up on the platform and they were standing there. And I said, Mama, can I be your little white boy? <laughs> And she and Bishop both hugged me, and that started the whole deal, I tell you what. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh, my. Thank you, Lord. Oh, J.C., I wanted to tell you, uh, it just really blessed me, sir, when I learned that your mom and dad got back together. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that good news? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I love this place. Open your Bibles with me this morning to the book of Galatians, please. And we will begin in the third chapter, Galatians chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Begin reading with me at this second verse. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and work of miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, 
the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it's written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, my Lord, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We're going to talk about faith. Hallelujah. Now, let's slip over to the fifth chapter, sixth verse. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Repeat that with me. But faith which worketh by love. Now go with me to the book of Romans, chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Man, I'm telling you, the Spirit of God's already moving in here this morning. Someone was just healed of a cough that you've had for a long time. Praise God. You're healed of it right now. Glory to God. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Verse 16. Therefore it is of faith. Therefore it is of what? Faith. faith. Which what? Worketh by love. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now look at this. Therefore, it is by faith, so that it might be by grace. Yes. Amen. Amen. No faith, no grace. No love, no faith. We done got serious here. You don't ever want to be caught out without grace. Doing anything, anywhere, anytime without grace. Dear Lord, man, the preach all over this place. Up there. Dear me. No human being has any concept of how big, how wonderful, how absolutely stupendous the grace of God is. Oh, hallelujah. Man, my goosebumps is double parked. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory. I, I, I kept questioning the Lord. I know about years now I did this. Lord, uh, what is your grace? Well, I know, I know it's unmerited favor and, and there's a lot of different Greek words translated grace and, and, and all that. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Amen. But it just, I don't know. It just... Yeah. 
I need something here. <laughs> and that just went on and on and on. And I thank God for your grace. Oh, I believe I receive a working definition of grace. Glory. And it just went on and on and on. I'm talking about a long time. And, but in the meantime, I'm learning a lot, you know. And it was expanding in me. But here, just a, just, just a few years ago, I, you know, I was up to my same routine. I said, Lord, I need a, uh, I, I need a working definition of grace. And all of a sudden, he said, grace is my overwhelming desire to treat you like sin never happened. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, there, there's a commercial on television, and, it, and this, this happened just almost at, almost at the same moment. And um, it's, they, you know, they, they wear, they, people wear green uniforms, and they got green trucks, and they got green vacuum cleaners, and, and they, they go in and clean stuff up. And, huh? And you, you remember what the slogan is? Like it never happened. <laughs> they gonna clean stuff up like it never happened. And I just, it had just been hours when the Lord had said that to me and I'm, I'm sitting there at the supper table and, and Gloria flipped the television on and them green people come on. <laughs> and, and I said, Gloria, that's what the Lord said grace is. Like it never ever happened. Like sin never happened. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, I don't ever want to be caught out with, my, with grace not working in my life. Man, that's dangerous. That's where the anointings come from. That's where revelation knowledge comes from. That's where peace comes from. And just go through the, just go through the New Testament sometime and, and just read down through it. Grace be unto you. Okay, thank you. Flip over. Grace be unto you. Okay, I'll take that one. Yeah, thank you. Praise God. Grace and peace. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll take me some of this. Faith. Say it again and let it feed your soul. Faith in God. Faith in God. Faith works by love. Now, let's, you, you, you can't talk about faith without going to Mark eleven twenty two, 22, right? So let's go over there. And there's no way that I'm going to preach a message in this church, particularly in remembrance of mom and dad, Without going to Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, and 25. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't very much often preach anywhere without going to Mark 11. Anyway, this is Jesus' classic teaching on faith. Mark chapter 11. Jesus had just demonstrated the faith of God. You know the story, but let's look at it anyway. Verse 12. On the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he, Jesus, was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not. And Jesus answered, now, I want you to notice something. It didn't say Jesus spoke. It said he answered. That fig tree's talking to him. You ain't getting nothing here today. I don't care how hungry you are. You ain't getting nothing off me. Have you ever heard somebody say, boy, old leg talking to me today. Well, talk back.
<laughs> Hallelujah. Dear Lord, you can preach the rest of the morning on that right there. Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. He spoke nine words to that tree. And his disciples heard it. So now, let's work with this a moment. How much distance do you suppose was between the two of them? Well, he saw a fig tree afar off. How far off was it? Well, it was far enough he couldn't tell whether it had figs on it or not. And, and people that see fig trees that grow in the United States for the most part, you know, they're bushes. Not where they were. These things are huge. They're big trees. Google it sometime. Look it up. It, it's amazing. It, and there, there are pictures you can find pictures online of withered up fig trees that have died from drought and that kind of thing. You can, you can see exactly what that tree looked like 24 hours later. Amen. Amen. So they heard him. So he wasn't standing there saying, you know, tree. <laughs> no, no, no. The tree heard it. And they heard it. So he's very bold about it. You don't have to be loud to get results, but you do have to be bold to get results. Amen. Then they come to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast them out the soul and bought in the temple, overthrew the tables of the money changers and seats of them that sold doves. And would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Now, most uh, general religious ideas without even thinking about it, this was an unusual situation for, you know, for uh, a man to go to church and, and whip everybody in there, I mean, and then preach. I mean, that, 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 that. <laughs> That's just not your everyday Sabbath, is it? <laughs> well, and majored on that fact, but the cleansing of that temple was not the mission. The cleansing of that temple made way for the word that was taught. The mission was the, the message, not that cleansing. Thank God the cleansing happened. But if you major on the cleansing, you miss the mission. Amen. Amen. So he taught. Now, saying unto them, is it not written, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, that was his text. The scribes and the chief priests heard it and saw it how they might destroy him. They feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when evening was come, my, 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 I tell you, that's a preacher after my own heart. Go in there, clean the place up and preach all day. <laughs> yeah, man, glory to God. Preach all day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So he took that text. Wouldn't you like to heard, to heard that message? on the house of prayer and the den of thieves <sighs> and have Jesus preach it all day long. My, my, my. And when the evening was come, he went out of the city. So now from the time he spoke that morning until now, there's been something like 12 hours have gone by. But notice, nobody said anything about that tree. And you know Peter. <laughs> if they could have seen any difference in that tree. Now, I can't prove this. You can't prove he didn't. This is just something I made up. <laughs> I think when they, when they got anywhere close to it, Peter kind of,
They all might have gone by there. I don't know. But I guarantee you Peter did. <laughs> and he was ready the next morning. They came back by there. Now 24 hours have gone by. As they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Jesus immediately replied, Have faith in God. My cross reference says, Have the faith of God. This is love himself teaching and revealing to the likes of you and me heaven's richest commodity and exact how it works. Whoa. Love did that for you. Love said, I'm going to help you here. Ooh, I'm going to show you something, sweetheart. I'm going to show you whatever you don't like, cast it out, whatever you do like, bring it in. <laughs> and it'll work every time. Hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe where? In his heart. That those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. He put the emphasis on the saying, yes, yes. not the believing. Right. Now, believing is important. Don't misunderstand me. Right. Well, yeah, Brother Copeland, I, you know, I believe Jesus is Lord. Yeah, but that's not what he's talking about here. Well, you know, I believe the Bible is absolutely true. Well, so do I, and that's wonderful, but that, that's not what he's talking about here. He said, believe in your heart, what you say will come to pass. I came home from school. I was a student there at Oral Roberts University. And, and uh, I came home from, from school one day and Gloria said, Kenneth, I, I've, been, I, I've just been getting a hold of this all day long. And she, she was at home in our little old shotgun house we lived in there in Tulsa. And... Um, she, she was there busy with the kids and, and doing her work at home. She said, listen to what Jesus said here. That believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I said, yeah. She said, no, no. Believe that the, all of those things you say come to pass. Yes. And man, it hit me. You better spend some time with nothing to say. And we started helping one another. And, uh, you know, Gloria... was probably the quietest person I had ever met in my life. She could, she could sit with you and look at you and smile for hours and never say anything. 
And she always said, well, you do enough talking for me and you both. So I don't know. <laughs> and particularly until she got, she started preaching and then, uh, you know, that changed quite a lot. But anyway, we started helping one another that we, we made a pack together. If you hear me say something stupid, then you say, that's your confession, and I believe it's coming to pass. Well, that sounded good when we made the agreement. But that got old, brother. <laughs> and I never got the chance to say anything. She just stood around and smiled and wouldn't say nothing. <laughs> well, you know, some. But, and uh, I, that, oh. Uh, that, that house we had, <laughs> it, that thing bark at you every morning. It, it was a dog. But anyway, <laughs> I, I got some pain from my landlord. And, and Gloria said, miracle of miracles. Can you see Kenneth Copeland painting the bedroom wall? <laughs> uh, yeah, you could if you'd have seen that house. Anyway, and he gave us, you know, some of these $1.298 paint brushes. And, and I, we're in there painting. I'm in one room, she's another. <laughs> and uh, I, we're painting along there, and and and, I, and some of the some of the bristles came out of that paintbrush, you know, and just stuck in the paint. <laughs> and I reached up there, and I'm trying, and I, and, you know, I'm I'm still thoroughly ingrained in doubt and unbelief. <laughs> And I said, Dad, gum it. See that? Anyway. <laughs> this paintbrush is coming all to pieces. She said, That's your confession, and I believe every word of it come to pass. <laughs> so I got to. <laughs> now you understand, I'm standing in the pulpit, right? Ain't no way I'm going to be lying. <laughs> I took one dip in that paint bucket and made one stroke. Every <laughs> bristle in that brush, every one of them come out of the handle and the whole brush is stuck to the wall. Gloria and I started dancing around the room. <laughs> Glory to God. Talk about your words coming to pass. Wow. Amen. Oh, anyway. <laughs> you and I are a product today of what we said yesterday. Now, I don't want to spend a great deal of time with that because that's not the primary message. So, Therefore, now I want you to notice something here. He shall have whatsoever he saith, therefore I say. Can you see it? Amen. He shall have whatsoever he saith, therefore I say to you. Now once Jesus of Nazareth made this statement, it's forever. Amen. Amen. It's forever. I mean, he settled the issue forever, heaven and earth. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, what did he say? Believe that what you say, the words you say, will come to pass. And believe you receive when you pray. You are a spirit. You have a soul made up of your will, your emotions, and your mind, the intellectual part of you, and the emotional part of you. 
that's part of your spirit. And you and your soul live in a physical body. The faith of God is in your spirit. That's the heart of man. That's the core of the human being. That force is resident in every born again believer that exists. Amen. 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 Ephesians 2, 8 tells us we're saved by grace and that through faith, not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. Romans 12, 3, for he has dealt unto every man the measure of faith. Well, how did he deal that measure of faith? How did you receive that faith in Ephesians 2, 8? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how it was dealt to you. And that's the only way it is ever dealt to anyone. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto it. Faith has to be released in the mouth with corresponding action. And I, you know, I'm just bouncing across the, the meadow here. <laughs> Just touching a few spots and every one of you could get up and come up here and preach this thing right behind me because you're so well taught in this church. And but like, you know, but like um, uh, Dad Hagen said, uh, if you hadn't heard it, I'm planting. If you have heard it, I'm watering. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, flip over there to John's Gospel, chapter 20. And let's touch on this for a moment. Don't lose your place there because we're coming right back. John chapter 20. And um, well, let's start with uh, verse 24. But Thomas, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we've seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, put my finger in the print of the nails, thrust my hand into his side. Now listen to this, listen to this, listen to it. His soul took command. His will took command. Now let me, let me paraphrase this a little bit. Unless... I see those holes in his hand. No, let, let me back up. When I see and put my finger in the holes in his hand and when I put my hand in his side, then and only then will I begin to believe. Until then, I ain't having nothing to do with it. I will not believe. He could have made a decision and said, I choose to believe now. But he didn't. I want to get this through to you. When I see and feel, I will begin to believe. Until then, I ain't believing nothing. Now go back to Mark eleven twenty four. 24. And let's put these two together. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, start believing then. Amen. 
Jesus then came in the room, walked through the wall, <laughs> said the door was shut, but there he was. Isn't that good? I got, I got some news for you. He's here right now. <laughs> someone just received a healing in your nose, some kind of blockage in your nose, and then someone has a, a sore throat, tonsillitis or something. That I, I just heard throat and tonsils, so uh, you're healed, so enjoy it. Praise God. <laughs> and um, he said, all right, Thomas. Give me a hand. It's stuck it in his side. He said, my God. Now, see, that's when he started believing. But there wasn't any faith in it. It was soul faith. Now, let me tell you something. You cannot, I'm not saying you, you understand, I'm talking about you, me, everybody. Amen. No one can grow spiritually without your faith growing. Because the growing of your faith, the increasing of, uh, uh, and maturing of your faith comes before you can grow spiritually. What happens is people get really, really good through soul, mental, emotional, and will development. And they can become very, very strong and very, very powerful and have almost no faith. Now, I didn't say they had no faith, almost. Your faith would get feeble because you're not feeding it. And that's what happens when traditions make the word of God of no effect. The word is of no effect. Very highly developed in religious tradition. Amen. Well, there's another week you could spend right there. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now, thank you, Jesus. There's, Lord, help me with this now. I, I can't, I can't right, rightly illustrate this without sounding like I'm trying to be vulgar, but I'm not. Uh, well, the New Testament uses the word bowels. Huh? And you, you read that, the, 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 um, where the scripture in the book of James makes a statement there, or excuse me, in, in uh, 1 John. And shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. First John 3, 17. Shutteth up his bowels. And I mean just for a long time. I don't even like to read that. I mean, you know, it just sounds kind of, kind of, of course you're talking about your heart. Well, why would they use the word bowel? Well, why do you use the word guts? Did you ever get a gut feeling? Where are your guts? Right there. That's, right. That's, right. That's talking about where your spirit man is. Amen. 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 So this spirit man, <laughs> and like I said, I, I don't have any better way of explaining this. Think about your physical body. Your, your physical body, you, the, you get a whiff of a smell, an aroma or, or something. And, and all of a sudden, your, your physical senses are heightened. And, and then all, all of a sudden, man, that hamburger smells good. <laughs> hmm. 
and but you didn't just get a whiff of it, but your digestive tract has already kicked in gear. Yes. I uh, went in the kitchen one day and I had a little pen knife in, in the kitchen junk drawer. Yeah, everybody got a junk drawer. And so, and, and I had, I didn't notice it was in there. And, and of course, John, as little as he was, I mean, you know, he'd crawl and climb and, and climb the cabinets and everything. And I went in there and, and, and he had that little pen knife out and he's trying to open it and I got it. And I said, now, John, now, now, come on, man, this thing. And I talked to him about the knife and told him, I said, now, knives are good. I like knives. You like knives. And he and I both still like and collect knives. But I told him, I said, now, John, I don't want you messing with this unless I'm there with you. And you holler at me and come get me and we'll play knives, man. I, I, but I, I, I don't want you to be fooling with this thing because it hurts. And I thought I put it away. Good enough. In a little bit. Ah! I went running in there and he had climbed up there and got that knife. And he got it open enough and, and, and trying to open it, he got his thumb around there under, between the knife and the body of the knife. The blade and the body of the knife. Now he's trying to work his thumb out of there is that hurting you? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody cut you. <laughs> See, I wanted to make the point, and he cut himself pretty good. I, I caught him up and caught him up in my arms and, and began to pray. And the moment I began to pray, in the spirited little head fell over and he went sound asleep. And so I just put my hand on his thumb and stood there and prayed in the spirit for a while and um, got a little bandage and put around there and, and prayed in the spirit of God. And within just a little while, he was totally healed. Amen. 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 Now you don't hurt anymore, do you? No. <laughs> the human being is an integrated system. What affects your spirit affects your body. What affects your body affects your mind. Yes. What affects your mind affects your body and your spirit. Yes, but they have different kinds of effects because what is spirit is spirit and what is flesh is flesh. Yes. Amen. Amen. I wanted to get through to you that words affect the spirit and the soul and the body. This is a word created, word governed. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Universe. Every, every person alive is under the domination of words and the word system. You can't change that but you can change the words under which you live and by you live. Hallelujah. We're blessed with that. Satan's stuck with it. He can't work outside that perimeter. He can't do anything to you apart from fear. The more than God can do anything for you apart from faith. He's stuck with it. And in order for him to operate, he's going to have to get you talking to give him license into your life. The sower sows the word. Right? Satan cometh immediately to steal the word that was sown. Now be very careful about this. Jesus said, the thief cometh but to steal. Now wait a minute. I heard some of you say kill. Be very, very cautious about this. Well, you know, what's the difference? I'm fixing to tell you. Jesus said, and if Jesus said it, it's important. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. His 
mission is to steal the word. He ain't after your money. He's after the word in your life. If he can get the word, he got your money. If he can steal the word, he can kill your kinfolks. If he can steal the word, he can then destroy. Now let me quickly show you the process. Jesus said in the 14th chapter of John, My words are not my own. It's the Father that dwelleth within me. He does the works. Amen. And then I'll summarize by this. He said, I can do nothing of myself. I only say what I hear my father say, and I only do what I see my father do. Now, that is the way it works. That's the way faith transfers material substance, spiritual substance, into material substance by faith transfer into this material earth. By God's words in heaven being put in our heart, in our mouth, and spoken, and the Father that dwells within does the work and transfers the material. That's the way the heaven and earth was, was created. Now I'm going to just take a, a moment here to share this with you. And uh, you just... Take it and meditate it out, but you'll find it's very, very scriptural. For all things were created by and for him. Well, that, make, that makes it sound like Jesus was the only one that did it. No, because God said, let us. Huh? Let us. Jesus. <laughs> Y'all going to help me with this. <laughs> The Spirit of God was moving on the face of the deep, but nothing was happening. Nothing did happen. That's, hey, the Holy Ghost always moving. He's always moving. He ain't never still. But nothing happened until someone spoke the word. And what Jesus said in John 14, 10 through 12 is exactly what happened on day one. God, I love this. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the Spirit of God's doing His part. And the father leaned over and said, Light be. Jesus said, Light be. And light was. I got me another row of goosey bumps right then. Glory to God. Yeah. So oh, she'd move in my life. Well, now you know what the problem is. The Spirit of God's doing His part. Jesus is doing His part. You're just saying the wrong stuff. You're saying, I wish I had faith. Jesus didn't say it comes by wishing. He said, have it. Have it means it's, I'm handing it to you. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Now then, once you've come to this, the place where you see how simple this is, Jesus didn't tell you and me but to do this, believe 
what you say comes to pass. Amen. 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 When you pray, believe you receive them. Yes. And you shall have them. Yes. Well, now, Jesus, what's the next one here? Oh, yeah, that. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. Now, let me back up to verse 22. Jesus answering, saith unto them, have faith in love. Uh, no, Brother, no, Brother Copeland, he said God. I know, God is love. Have love's faith. I'm going to say it again. Have love's faith. Have the love kind of faith. Well, of course, Jesus had to say, hey, let me tell you something. You get, you get in your car, you know, first thing you're going to have to do, you, somehow or another you're going to have to turn this thing on. You know, that's step one, isn't it? But now, you're eventually going to have to engage this system some way where you can get from here to wherever it is you want to go. And that comes when you engage the transmission that transmits the power in the front end to the wheels on the back end. And that 25th verse is when you put it in gear. Because you ain't done anything. Oh, yeah, you said you believe in your heart and you said to the mountain with your mouth and you stood there and said, I believe I received my healing and I shall have. It's still in neutral. And you can sit there and go, wah, wah, yeah, yeah, amen, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, till you run slap out of gas. And you're still in the garage. I just don't understand why this stuff don't work for me. Well, for one thing, you just said it don't work. Let me, let, let me give you some real advice. When you're in a hole, don't dig. <laughs> when you're in debt, don't borrow money to get out of debt, brother. I mean, that. Oh, thank you, Laura. I just got a revelation. That's the answer to the question, how dumb can you get? <laughs> Or, you know, I've answered that question myself a lot of times, brother. I have proven and demonstrated just how dumb you can get. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for his grace. Amen. Now, when you stand praying, forgive. Flying over here this morning, uh, I preached last night in, in uh, Dayton, Ohio. And so we got up early and got an airplane, flew over here and on the days that I preach, I don't fly. So I'm sitting back there in the cabin, I'm praying in the Spirit, I'm going over these scriptures. And, uh, that, and this is right hot off the press, you understand? I mean, I just, it hasn't been long that the Lord said this to me on the way over here this morning. He said, Whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. He said, This, this is prayer in motion. Amen. Now he said, Kenneth, when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. He said, I intend for you to be in that forgiving mode while you're praying, while you're believing, while you're speaking. Because he said, you understand? I am the spirit of forgiveness. The grace. 
grace, grace. I tell you, both of us, you and me, need to be to the point, and my wife, I tell you what, I've never met anybody like her in my life. And when I met her, I want you to know, as Kenneth B.C., you understand? And I, I was in bad shape, really bad shape. And, but I fell in love with her the first second I laid eyes on her. Changed my entire life. I asked her to marry me on the first date. Well, I mean, you know, I had a couple of weeks to think about it. I didn't see her from the time I met her to, to for a couple of weeks there or so. And I thought, boy, this girl's got class. And, you know, and uh, I'm going to have to get this started quick. <laughs> because, you know, I need time to lie, whatever it is I need to do here, you know. Amen. And this is probably going to take some time for her to, you know, for her to decide, you know. And so we went out that, that night and, you know, we, and I'll tell you what, it wasn't nothing fancy because I was so broke I couldn't pay attention. <laughs> but we got back to her dad's house that night and stepped up on the porch. And just as we stepped up on the porch, I said, Gloria, will you marry me? She said, okay, and <laughs> turn around, no kiss. <laughs> Went in the house and shut the door in my face. <laughs> she said, she said, I got in the house and I thought, what have I done? I don't even know this guy. <laughs> Oh, well, she said, I'll get out of it later. <laughs> well, April the 13th, 55 years, and she ain't out of it yet. Praise <laughs> God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Well, <laughs> oh, Lord, where was I when I got off into all that? <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. But the power of the love of God was working right then. Now, Gloria Copeland, like I said, we've been married 55 years. We got born again, both of us got born again within two weeks of one another um, after, after we'd been married six months. And that was in, she got, she got saved in October and I got saved in, the, in November. And then in January the following year, which was 1963, both of us, we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, spoke with other tongues. Now, thank you, Lord. Now, I had a lot of fusses. She never has. She has never entered into an argument with me in 55 years. She taught me, she taught me this phrase. Sweetheart, I find no fault in you. I was this, oh man, I was running from the ministry and knew it. You know, after we'd been born again. And boy, there one day I was just raking her over the coals at the top of my voice and she's just standing there just taking it. Never said a word, nothing. And suddenly I was separated from my words. I'm standing there listening to what's coming out of my mouth. The spirit of depression had ruled my life for a long time. And I didn't know enough. He, 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 I didn't know enough. Uh, I didn't know anything about the word of faith. I didn't know anything about the word of God. I didn't know how to get out of of that. And I, I was yielding to it. And God trying to move me towards the ministry. And then, you know, I don't go into all that trash. But I'm standing there. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, I don't have any business. I'm thinking this and all this other mess is coming out my mouth. That demon is running my mouth. Now, I did not have a demon in my spirit. I'm a new creature. 
old things passed away and behold all things are of God. And this inner man is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And ain't no way any devil getting in there unless I let him in there. There's another couple of weeks right there. We could do, <laughs> boy, we could have a month meeting here, you understand? <laughs> anyway, I just stopped suddenly. That's important to understand. The moment I made a decision to shut that up, it shut up. Don't come up to me and say, Brother Copeland, I just can't help it. Oh, you just won't help it. You just don't feel like you can help it. But it's so hard. I know it. If it is easy, everybody be doing it. It's the reason there's great rewards involved. I said, oh, Gloria. Oh, my God, sweetheart. I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She still never said anything. But you could see her lips. Just praying in the spirit. Just praying in the spirit. I went over and just fell on the couch over on my side. And I went in a very, very deep sleep. When I woke up, I really thought I had been asleep for hours. But it hadn't been just but for a few moments. The moment I, I'm, laying, I'm, I'm, I'm on my side like this and I open my eyes and Gloria is right there sitting on the floor just inches from my face. Mm. I said, oh, Gloria, my God, woman, I've got to preach. She said, I know. <laughs> We came back through Hawaii one time. This, this one just, boy, this, this, this branded me. We had been in Australia and been preaching all over the South Pacific, and we landed in Hawaii for a few days to rest. And That's what I felt like. <laughs> I'm grumbling around and around, you know. Went downstairs to a restaurant out by the pool. And I didn't like nothing that waitress did. I mean, I was so tired, I can't. Now, that ain't no excuse for you being a jerk. And I, 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 I threw some money down on the on the table. I turned around. She had moved right over behind me while I was facing the table. And when I turned around, she caught me by the, the my, my collar, my shirt collar like this, and pulled me down to her. And this little tear, what is that old country song? Little bitty tear let me down. <laughs> this little tear she said, sweetheart, I am going to be a blessing to you some way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I repent. <laughs> that moment changed me from that day to this. Anybody can do that. But you have to choose and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. Herein is our love made perfect. How? Practice, 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 mature it, mature it. Love, love. Rebuke your own self for getting offended. Rebuke your own self. Stop it. You need to learn how to just slap the sap out of yourself. Amen. Shut your mouth. I judge myself. I don't condemn myself, but I judge myself. Now then, <laughs> glory. When you stand praying, forgive if you have all against it. Faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. Now, God is love, 
and it's love's faith. Well, of course it won't work in an unforgiving heart. How could it? Unforgiveness in a heart created by love is in a strange environment and it doesn't belong there. Hallelujah. Faith won't work in an unforgiving heart. Look with me in Mark chapter 2. I'm getting close to closing. I could start closing now. It could happen anytime. Mark chapter 2. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in the house. This was his house. He was in the house. It was in Capernaum and it was on the lakeshore. Straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word to them. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, I'm going to ask you to study this for yourself. Study, study all of the accounts of it in the Gospels. And you will notice, you know, the doctors and the lawyers and the scribes, I mean, they were all there. But they were not hostile to him. They were in his house. Now, when he was in their house, they're downright mean to him. But when the, when, when the sick man got up and went home, they all glorified God. See, they were in his house, so they were not hostile to him. This is, this is big. This is important. I want you to flow with this and, and, and visualize this. They come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they'd broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Jesus saw their faith when he saw their faith. Now, I, I, believe, it's, it's while, I, I believe it's while he was on the way down. He saw their faith. And he said, son, oh my goodness, he called him son. Don't you know that perked his ears up? Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Another account, he said, be of good cheer. Now, Condemnation over sin obviously was a big part of this man's being in the condition he was in. Yes, sir. We don't know what it was, but we know the devil, don't we? Yes, sir. And that kind of thing, I mean, that'll bring sickness and disease on you. Now, he could have been, he could have been hearing redeemed from the curse all the time. Amen. Because you didn't have to, Jesus didn't have to come to redeem us from the curse or deliver us from sickness and disease on the, cur the, the, the curse because of the day of atonement. Amen. Amen. Every year. Amen. All you had to do was believe you were forgiven. Yes. And God said, that's okay, baby. I'll treat you like you didn't do it. Amen. Isn't that good? So see, you didn't have to keep the law all your life. You could keep it half a day. And, and immediately think, oh, come on atonement. Come on, I, I got a whole year to go here, but I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the day of atonement. I'm thinking glory to God. Well, you know what God will do. I mean, you know, he'll heal you on the credit, brother. And, 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 but you understand, can you see the, the attitude here? And us Gentile Christians with, that came out of the Gentile world, we don't even know that. And we accuse people of things 
we, we've accused people of things like once you sin that brother, it's forever. Like one guy said, I bet I'd have been better off for to kill my wife instead of divorcing her. He said, they won't even let me back in the church. But if I'd have gone to jail, they'd have sent somebody down there to preach to me. Isn't that right? Like one that there's a, there's a brother told me one time, he said, Brother Kenneth, he said, I want to tell you something now. He said, I was a member in good standing for nine years, a known alcoholic and wife beater. I got born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and began going around saying I've been made the righteousness of God, and they kicked me out in 90 days. I better get back over here. Where... Anyway, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now what the problem turned out to be, well, let's continue to read and we'll find out. And who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, now you notice they didn't reason among themselves. They were reasoning within themselves. So there's a bunch of them in there thinking the same thing, but they weren't getting together and that kind of thing. They're just sitting there thinking that. But it distracted them. Amen. Let's hold it right there and we'll finish this in the Gospel of Luke. If you'll go there in the fifth chapter. And Luke 5.17 is where it begins. It came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. There were Pharisees and doctors of the law and so forth. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The healing power of God was in operation before the roof ever got broken up. It was there. It was in the word that he was teaching. It is in him. Of course the power was there. It was in him. Amen. They got distracted. The sower sows the word. Satan Cometh immediately. Who does he think he is talking about? Forgiving. Now as long as he's thinking that, he's not hearing a word Jesus said. It happens all the time. Just a little small touch of criticism and judgment. I wonder why Brother Copeland wears so many blue suits. Oh, what did he say? The reason why I wear blue suits ain't none of your business. <laughs> So why are you sitting there criticizing me? Oh, my blue suit. Hey, that's how easy it is for the devil to steal your healing. Right at a time when your faith, you, 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 your faith is just doing its best to get something to eat here. And you're thinking about blue suits. All right. What do you say? That's what happened in that. Whether it is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth 
to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, now notice something very important here. Note, watch him use his words. Watch him use his words like a tool. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up your couch and go into your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up that wherein he lay and departed his own, to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they all glorified God and were filled with fear saying, we've seen strange things. But it could have been better than that. They all could have been healed. The bottom line. I like that. That sounded good, didn't it? The bottom line. The same power. that forgave the man's sin, healed his body. The power of forgiveness is not one power of God and healing some different power of God. It's the same force. It is the same power. It's the same God of love. Hallelujah. And we have the mighty power. We have a commandment. Be tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave you your trespasses. Now say this. I have a measure of the same faith that created the heavens and the earth inside me right now. I'm a new creation. I'm a new, I'm a new creature. And the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Now, don't, don't, don't go be going around talking about that great measure of faith you got. Without couple right in there. With the love of God. With the faith of God. Because that faith is not working without the love. Renew your mind to when you hear love, you think God. When you hear God, you think love. We've made a slang word out of the word love. Don't you just love my blue suit? No, you don't. How dare you love my suit? That's, wow, I love pizza. And some other guy says, you going to tell you what I love. No, I better not tell you what I love. Everything I love, the illegal, immoral, or fattening. <laughs> God is love. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And we slung his name around to the point yes. where it has no honor. Love. I love this. I love that. I love it. No, baby, don't love the things of this world. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Don't be loving the things of this world. Well, then what am I supposed to do? You got a Bible, don't you? Don't you remember what the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy to tell rich people? He said, he didn't write to them and tell them, say, y'all better get rid of all that money. No, no. He said, tell them that are rich in this world not to be high-minded, but to be willing and ready to distribute. For God has given us all things 
richly to enjoy. I don't love my new suit, but I sure do enjoy it. Yeah. You know what my wife got me for my 80th birthday? Mm, no, she didn't give me no blue suit. A brand new red Corvette. Ha, ha, ha. Whoa! That is a wife of every man's dream, Bubba. <laughs> yeah! Glory to God. And she and I get in there, and we sit under that Corvette, and I got me this little red hat, because, you know, it's, uh, and it says, mm-hmm, right on top of it. And sit down in there and cock her over there just a little bit. And, and I'm thinking in my mind, you know, I'm pulled up at that signal light. See, I don't go to stoplights. They green as much as they are red. I go to green lights. <laughs> I'm just, I'm really acting stupid here, but I'm enjoying every bit of it. So. <laughs> And I know that guy sitting over looking over and said, look at that old man. Got that Corvette. <laughs> yeah, Bubba, and she bought it for me. Amen. Ain't no way she old as him. <laughs> well, no, she's not. She's five years old. Now. And I'm like most of you guys in here, probably all of you. My wife married beneath herself and help me arise. <laughs> and buying me a new Corvette didn't hurt nothing. <laughs> I know, JC, I'm quitting here, all right. I'm a, I'm a, well, you know, when you're home, you get, well. <laughs> Go right to... First John, and we'll close. Chapter 4. And let's look beginning with fifteen first. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known, the word translated known there is the same word that in some places is translated intercourse. It's translated intimate relationship to know, to know. We have known, when did that happen? When you got born again. You, you can't get any closer to anybody than you are to God. No. That's the biggest miracle in this universe. And you and I experienced it. And it was done by the love of all love. Hallelujah. We have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God who is love dwells in him. Known, not just known, known and believed the love. Now, where do you go with this? Most people, I mean, I'd go so far out on the limb as to say 99% of Christian people have only soul development where it comes to believing that God loves them. You know it in your heart, but believing it in your heart, that's another thing. Do you remember what they said to him when he was lying on the pillar in the back of the boat and the storm was raging? They went over and said, don't you care We're dying out here and you don't care. They're talking to love himself. 
The only reason he's there is because he loves them. Amen. They don't believe it. The children of Israel had no idea, did no way in the world they believed that God loved them. You just sent us out here so they could rape our children and starve to death and kill us here. We'd be better off if we'd go back to Egypt. How dare you to talk to love himself like that? They didn't believe he loved them. Most people don't. God, can't you, can't you understand? What did I do to deserve this? Don't you care? Don't you? Don't you, 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 you better shut up. Amen. You're off on some bad territory. You're accusing Jesus of lying. Ooh, we got quiet in here, didn't it? Have faith in love. Believe that love. Believe in that love. I mean, your whole house has fallen under attack and your brain is, feels like it's about to come out of your skull and everything around you is coming apart and you think, God, and, and you just keep having these thoughts. God is punishing me over something. I refuse to believe that. No, he loves me and I, he, there's no way that my heavenly father is going to get into child abuse with me. No, 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 no. And, and know your scriptures. Isaiah 43, 25 said, and for his own sake, he's blotted out my sins and remembers them no more. He laid them on Jesus. He blotted out my sin with his blood. He's not in here trying to beat me up. It's the devil trying to steal the word out of me. I rebuke you, devil. I, my Jesus loves me. He gave himself for me. I believe in that love. I believe I receive it. I walk in it. Glory to God. Be it done unto me according to your word. And your word is not a doubt word. Your word is a faith word. Your word is not a death word. Your word is a life word. Your word is a faith word. Hallelujah. And you love me. God loves Kenneth. God loves Kenneth. God loves Kenneth. God loves Kenneth. 17th chapter of John, Jesus is praying right before he went to the cross and he said, Father, show them that the world might know that you love them as much as you do me. And that the love wherewith you love me might be in them. The love that God loved Jesus with is in you. And you telling me you can't forgive somebody because they stole your parking place? Come on, get out of here. But you can't unless you start practicing it. You need to start forgiving every morning before you get out of bed. I'm a forgiver. Glory to God. I am not a condemner. I am a forgiver. Glory to God. Glory to God. I forgive. I believe I receive. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I believe I love. The love of God is on the inside of me and by faith I'm calling it forth. Compassion is rising in me daily. I'm very compassionate. I'm compassionate to preach the word. I'm compassionate to preach the word of faith. I'm compassionate to witness on the street. Praise God, I'm gonna get somebody born again every day of my life, hallelujah, somehow, some way. Glory to God. Glory to God. Herein is my faith made perfect. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you. My, the healing power of God's all over the place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed, please. If there is anyone here this morning that has never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
don't put it off, not another second. Jesus went to hell. Love did that for you. So you don't have to go. Jesus did all the hard part. But the one thing he couldn't do is pray your and my prayer. We have to do that. Hallelujah. Anyone that would say, Brother Copeland, I've known the Lord, but I, I've got out of fellowship with him. I'm, I'm, I'm out of the Lord's house right now, but I want to come back. Would you pray for me? Anyone here under either one of those two conditions? Would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Anyone at all? Anyone at all? Pray. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. Amen, I see that. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, yeah, there's another one. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Those of you that raise your hand, if you would, please, just take another bold step and come right on up here. I, I, I want to pray with you. And those of you that should have raised your hand, come on now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise.